Okay, so here we go. <clears throat> so welcome everybody and thank you for participating in the third um, FDOT District 5 roadside chat series. Uh, I am Claudia Calzaretta, the District 5 Florida Scenic Highway Coordinator, and it's wonderful to have you all with us today. Uh, the series is open to everybody, so please, when you get these in the future, send them out. Um, it's not precluded just to the byway community. Anybody can join in. Um, we've had a lot of a lot of good participation. Uh, great questions. And if you have anything of interest that you'd like to see in the future, let us know. And if you have a contact person, that's even better that we can reach out to. So today's guest is Mark Felzone. Mark is the president of Scenic America. Scenic America is the only national nonprofit that helps citizens safeguard the scenic qualities of America's roadways and communities. Under Mark's leadership, Scenic America has celebrated a huge number of victories, and their victories are our victories, so that we can celebrate together. So what we're going to do is we're going to mute everybody. Um, if you have any comments, questions, feel free to put them in the chat. And at the end, Mark will take questions and then we can go to the live questions. And when uh, we wrap this up, uh, Karen Ford will put this on YouTube so anybody can can um, look it up and listen to it later. Or you can send it out to anybody you might want to, as well as the first two that we've done uh, are also posted on YouTube and you'll be able to access those. So without further ado, Mark, take it away. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so it's it, first of all, it's really uh, great to be here. Let me um, get my presentation going here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, do we have the full screen of the presentation now? Yes. OK, great. Um, so uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me. It uh, means a lot uh, to be here and um, feel free to um, you know, I, I do want to actually encourage you because I'm going to cover a number of topics today. I encourage you to actually a ask your questions, um, you know, uh, in real time if you want. You don't have to wait to the end. Um, and uh, uh, I would just ask, uh, um, you know, uh, Claudia for your help in moderating that because I may not necessarily see um, the question, uh, but um, feel free to jump in and and ask any questions that you have because um, you know we're we're going to be like I said covering a number of topics and I want to make sure that uh, we don't miss out on your questions because honestly that's the most important part of this. So um, again, it's a it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, uh, let me just talk about Scenic America for a moment. Uh, our mission is to preserve and enhance the visual character and scenic beauty of our country. That's what we do. Uh, we do that by uh, we've identified these strategic priorities that we work on. And that's uh, scenic byways, parks and open space, the undergrounding over overhead wires, beautiful highways without billboard blight, uh, gateway communities uh, to parks and public land. These are the communities that are host or adjacent to or near um, uh, uh, public lands, and uh, you know preserving community character. I'm probably going to talk about four of these six topics, uh, but I'm going to do the most. Uh, uh, we're going to do the deepest dive, obviously, into scenic byways. Um, and so um, with that said, I just want to do a very quick review of some of the legislation we worked on. And this is only some of it. Uh, I don't if I don't have the Great American Outdoors Act listed here, uh, which I could go into in depth, but um, we're not going to do that today. So I'm just going to list uh, these three pieces of legislation that we worked on. Uh, and actually, we were the lead on all three of these. Um, uh, the Reviving America Scenic Byways Act. Uh, the Consolidated Appropriations Act 2021 and the Surface Transportation Reauthorization, which includes actually two different bills, uh, the Moving Forward Act in the House and America's Transportation Infrastructure Act that's in the Senate. We'll talk about these. Um, we're going to we're going to talk about each of these um, uh, in, in as we move on here. So I just thought you might like to see uh, what does the National Scenic Byways, what does the Scenic Byways Network look like nationwide? Well, you can see um, well, we're in uh, uh, the scenic byways are all across 49 states. You'll see a, a lower middle of your screen. Uh, Texas is the only state that does not have a scenic byways program. However, 
Our friends at Scenic Texas are working with the Texas legislature to hopefully get one started this year. So that would be um, uh, uh, crucial. And uh, I'm hoping that this year we'll actually have all 50 states uh, participating in the program. So that's great. Um, the Reviving America Scenic Byways Act, a lot of you know about. Uh, this was signed by the president on September 22nd, 2019. It uh, passed by big, bi big bipartisan margins, 404 to 19 in the House and unanimously in the Senate. And uh, what it did is it, it told the Federal Highway Administration that you need to uh, go ahead and, and have a new round of uh, national designations. There had not been national designations in uh, 10 years. And so uh, we felt as though it was time. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, this was also part of our grand scheme to eventually work on funding next. We felt as though this would be a really easy, good way to get Congress re-engaged in the issue. And so, um, and something that we thought that uh, scenic byways across the country would also find useful. And so we wanted to give Congress something uh, positive to vote on that didn't have any money attached to it. So that way we got uh, members of Congress educated on scenic byways and used to voting for scenic byways. So this was, uh, this was just as much a part of the strategy as it was at its own piece. So, uh, you know, this was all um, uh, you know, part of the same uh, uh, strategy. So, uh, and all in all, there there have been 64 nominations for new designations, including um, uh, five in uh, the great state of Florida. Uh, we know that A1A Scenic and Historic Coastal National Scenic Byway uh, has applied for All American Road status, and we see uh, these other uh, scenic byways: Green Mountain, River of Lakes, Scenic Sumter Heritage, and Scenic 30A have all applied for National Scenic Byway status. Good luck to all uh, all uh, folks. I have no insider information as to who uh, will be designated. <clears throat> what I can talk to you about is timing. Um, you know, uh, we believe that, um, um, so, you know, under the law, this should have been announced shortly before Christmas. Um, however, when there's a change in administration, um, you know, there's a transition that you've, heard about and read and seen in the news. And sometimes uh, uh, announcements get paused uh, while there's a transition going on. I am almost certain that is the case here. Uh, and uh, and what I think we can expect is once uh, new officials are in place and ready to sign off on uh, announcements, uh, then this will move forward. We do believe the work is done. Um, and, um, you know, what we've been telling folks is, um, you know, early, early this year, we think it'll happen. I think it could happen as soon as this month. Um, I think the latest it'll happen is probably April, but please don't hold me to that. But if I had to, uh, gamble on this and I'm not a gambler, um, I would, I would probably say it's going to happen sooner than later. And I hope it happens uh, sooner than later, because I know folks have been waiting a long time for that. So. Um, uh, so you know, stay tuned um, and we will definitely help get out uh, the news on that as well. So if you're not on our email list, you might want to go to scenic.org and just join our email list. And uh, we don't email too often, only once or twice a month. So uh, it's really helpful. So um, uh, that's where we are on that. Because of our work on that, uh, you know, we actually won an award, uh, a, a national award from what's called the uh, American Society of Association Executives. Uh, for those who are in sort of the uh, uh, the nonprofit world, and I don't mean just 501c3s, but I mean like 501c6s, 501c4s, you know, the whole gamut. Um, this is the organization that represents sort of all of those groups, trade associations, professional associations, philanthropic organizations. Um, you know, so ASAE is sort of the association of associations so it's um they're pretty big and uh we were thrilled to get uh, an award uh, for our advocacy work uh, we were only one of five organizations to win the power of a gold award for advocacy so we're really proud of that and um you know we've come a long way at scenic america um you know we actually when i took over four years ago uh just coming up on four years um we didn't have any staff in dc and we sort of restructured everything and and um, uh, you know wanted to become more uh, of a player in Capitol Hill, and and so here we are. We uh, we actually have done pretty well. Um, so we followed that up with money. All right. So I already mentioned that Scenic Byways funding 
was always something that uh, um, was the goal here. We didn't want to just uh, uh, open new designations. We also wanted to get money for it. That was always part of the plan. Um, we're pursuing long-term funding, but at the same time, we wanted to pursue short-term funding. So again, you know, this is all part of part of the strategy. Last year, when we were working on this, most of our efforts were spent on long-term funding, which I'll talk about in, in a moment. But we knew that there was a very good chance that the long-term funding vehicle, which is the Surface Transportation Reauthorization Bill, which I'll talk about, uh, we knew that the odds of that happening last year were at best 50-50, maybe even, you know, 30-70. Um, and so we decided to pursue a parallel strategy of some short-term funding this year because we really wanted to get byways uh, funding as soon as possible. And so I'm um, really proud that just, you know, a month, less, less than two months ago, a month, month and a week or month and month and a half ago, um, uh, and that big omnibus bill that uh, you saw um, was signed by the president December 27th. We have $16 million in funding for the National Scenic Byways Program. This is the first time that we've seen byways funding, uh, <clears throat> you know, in nine years. It's really exciting. 2012 would be the last time that it uh, was funded. And um, we're really excited that uh, uh, this is happening. So uh, what can the funding be used for? I know that this is probably a question that a lot of you are asking, and I've tried to boil it down to these eight bullet points, but the truth is you're gonna wanna go to our website if you see that link down below for more information, because <clears throat> I'm trying to boil this down to a PowerPoint. Um, and you can imagine we have more information on our website. We've actually spent a lot of time the past um, uh, month or two building out our scenic byways portion of our website because we knew there would be questions like this. So, um, you know, what can it be used for? The development of a state scenic byway program. So I suppose our friends in Texas could uh, take heart in that and we hope that this will help them get their program going. Uh, but also implementation of a, of a quarter management plan, safety improvements to a byway, construction of pedestrian and bicyclist amenities, rest areas, turnouts, highway shoulder improvements, overlooks, interpretive facilities, um, you know, like a visitor center, for instance, um, enhanced access to recreation, uh, protection of one of the intrinsic values, um, and uh, development of tourist information, uh, with the exception being you can't use it for straight up advertising, um, but you can use it for, you know, educational information, interpretive information, things like that. So, um, and finally, a scenic byway marketing program, but again, not 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 ads. So, um, uh, you know, that's uh, one thing that is uh, expressly uh, uh, forbidden in uh, in the program. So, um, those that's sort of a top level of where the money is. And I'm guessing I'm going to pause here because I cannot see the chat yet. And let me go over to the chat. Uh, but uh, I'm guessing there might be might be some questions. Uh, uh, Claudia, if you want to help facilitate. Any questions? I do not see any questions yet. I, I do have a comment. Mark, that list, this is Mike Pelosi, that list looks very sim familiar. Um, it looks very similar, I guess, to what the scenic byways have funded in the past. Um, so you're, you guys are assuming that essentially what was approved or was acceptable in the past in the way of a project is going to continue on in the future? That's exactly right. As a matter of fact, this is exactly the, the past criteria. Um, and, you know, if you look at, if you look at the uh, paper trail of, of what scenic byways have, have happened, uh, what has happened with scenic byways, the interim policy governing scenic byways is actually never made final. It's still governing under an interim policy. And I expect that to be the case um, for a little while. Um, and, and I don't expect any major changes. Now, could there be major changes down the road or some changes anyway, minor changes down the road? Yeah, I do. I don't necessarily think those changes would happen before this round of funding. I, I just don't, I think they're gonna wanna get this money out the door. So I cannot envision them changing it. I'm not saying that, you know, obviously there'll be a call for funding. Um, I can I can envision them uh, maybe trying to give priority to uh, projects that are you know shovel ready so to speak or you know um, you know ready to spend and not you know something that's you know not going to be spent until two years out I could see that happening um, uh, but um, uh, 
Uh, other than that, yeah, no, this is this is the old list, and we believe it's going to be the new list as well. Okay, and we've got a couple of questions in the queue. Uh, yep. Danny Anderson, uh, her question is: Any idea when the grant cycle will begin? That's a great question. So um, the answer is, it Federal Highways is not allowed to publish this grant uh, information until they announce the um, the new byways. Um, so it will definitely be after the announcement of the new National Scenic Byway designations. That I can tell you. Um, will it be shortly after? I hope so. Um, I have to believe that they're going to want to do this. It is intended to use this in federal fiscal year 21, which ends September 30th. But, um, you know, we also, and so we're hoping that it does get used before September 30th. Uh, but with that said, it is not um, knowing how the federal government works. We have language in there that says that if for some reason they don't um, uh, get all the money out by September 30th, it's good for four years. Um, now, we don't want it to be used for a whole four years because we intend to get long term funding that hopefully is going to be at even higher levels that we'll be talking about. But um, uh, that is um, uh, where we stand with that money. Does that answer that question? I, I believe it does. Um, I will add um, that it's going to be a tight window. When, yes. when you think about how a project is programmed within DOT, generally you're talking about looking at uh, the concept and getting your estimates and stuff like that the year before the actual funding comes down. Uh, in this particular scenario, we're looking at a tight, tight window. Um, so I've been advising my byways to start working on uh, cost estimates and concepts to get things down. The first year might be the best. The best avenue is to go after low hanging fruit, uh, such as byway management plans and stuff like that, and build up from there because we can start working on those bigger projects. So, yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's absolutely right. And, and uh, let me add to that. Um, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people on this call are already familiar with this, but um, this is a, um, a federal um, uh, um, uh, program that is not formula based. Uh, it is um, uh, what happens is, but it is still managed through the state DOTs. So, um, you know, the state DOTs will sort of submit a list of uh, projects to federal highway and federal highway will then uh, allocate money based on um, criteria that they may have and they generally try to spread out the money across the country um, but um, you know uh, they will ask uh, they will try to honor state dot this is how it's been done in the past again i can't say for certain that it'll be done this way in the future but it usually is uh, we can expect it i think this year um, where they will um, uh, use those discretionary grants they're totally discretionary uh, and um, try to honor state dot um, you know, priorities, so. Okay, yeah. uh, another question, Donna asks, how is advertising separate from marketing? Right, well, um, I think that, you know, that 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 is, uh, that's really, uh, I think, I think in the case of a scenic byway marketing program, I think the idea is you can for, like prepare a brochure, you know, or you can, uh, uh, de you know, design and, and prepare uh, in print even a brochure. You can design, you know, a um, uh, um, something like that that, you know, helps uh, 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 market uh, the byway and entities along uh, the byway. But I think it's different when you're talking about an advertisement, which is like, you know, something in the newspaper or something on the air, on the radio or on TV. So there's a there is I know that, you know, there's a sort of um, what's the difference, but there is a little bit of a difference where advertising is a very specific um, tool that could be part of a marketing program. But um, marketing is sort of a bigger um, basket, if you will, uh, where you're talking about, you know, the sort of the branding, for instance, could be part of marketing that 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 would be not an ad like, you know, OK, we're going to rebrand our byway in a certain way with a catchy slogan and uh, an artistic visual palette 
that matches uh, you know, the, the color scheme of the byway. So uh, there's a lot of um, things like that that instead go into a marketing program that wouldn't necessarily be just cutting an ad. So that, does that make sense? Yeah, that, that was a great response. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, another question is, is there any chance that this could be shot down by executive action? Um, no, no. Um, so uh, President Trump in his last, um, so this is already law, um, and President Trump in his last um, uh, uh, executive action, I'd say two days before he left office, he uh, issued uh, what are known as rescissions, which basically would put money on hold for 60 days and uh, and allow Congress to reconsider uh, the program. Uh, and um, uh, he did not do that for anything in transportation. So he did that for a lot in interior, but not in transportation. And so this program was unaffected by that. And, um, uh, you know, the guidelines certainly can be affected by Federal Highway Administration. They could, what I have in front of you right now, theoretically could change. I don't think it will because uh, they're going to want to get this money out the door, I think, sooner than later. So I don't believe that um, you will see that anything like that happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. And ultimately, so the, the legislature, they, they, this, the co Congress appropriated this money already. So it's not like you know, the money, you know, can be used, you know, elsewhere. So, yeah. Okay. So uh, one more question, question, and you might address this later on in the program. Yeah. Uh, can the funds be used to pay for burying utilities such as power lines and telecoms? Yeah, so I actually believe it can be. Uh, now I'm going to talk about other uh, potential areas as well. Uh, but, um, you know, when you're talking about the protection of the intrinsic values of the byway, uh, that to me is, you know, uh, you know, we're looking at it right here on this, uh, let me see, four or five, sixth bullet, protection of scenic, historical, recreational, cultural, natural, and archaeological resources. You know, I believe that that would be um, a good reason to do it. Uh, and uh, frankly, um, I think that, um, you know, making sure you get your, your, your FDOT, your, your DOT on board with it is really important as well, uh, because ultimately they're going to be the ones shepherding this uh, through to FHWA. I, so I do believe it can be, but it is not, it is a belief. Um, uh, it, uh, but I, I see no reason why it couldn't be, um, particularly, but you have to tie it to one of these um, uh, type things. And, you know, that's one area that I see, particularly if it's part of your corridor management plan. I mean, look at bullet two, right? Um, you know, uh, if, if you have, you know, this as a priority in your corridor management plan, I think that only strengthens it. And if you then tie it to your intrinsic quality, that to me, you know, makes it even stronger, you know, um, uh, because we want our scenic byways to be scenic, right? Isn't that the whole point here? Right. Okay, well, that's all we have for now. Okay, um, so I'm going to move on and I'm going to talk about sort of the long term uh, uh, issues. So I've talked about short term issues and all the long term issues that we're working on uh, live in uh, what's called surface transportation reauthorization. This is also known as the highway bill. Um, uh, this is a bill that Congress must pass every four to seven years. Uh, I believe we're going to be at the six year mark this year. Um, it funds our nation's highways, so that's why it must pass, okay? Um, uh, it, it, this is a bill that absolutely has to pass at some point. Um, the current version is the FAST Act. It became law uh, in December of 2015. It was set to expire in September, uh, but it was extended a year. So now the new expiration is September 30th, 2021. Um, and so this is expected to be uh, uh, taken up. I'd say if you had asked me a few months ago, I would have said as early as February or March, because we had sort of a choppy transition between the Trump and the Biden administration. Unfortunately, that means that stuff is slowed down. And so I'm guessing now we will see this start sometime between April and June. Um, 
And when I say start, I actually mean restart because a lot of work was actually done on this last year. Uh, and I'm going to get into that right now. So the House did the most work on, on the bill. Uh, they passed a, a, a piece of legislation all the way through the House called the Moving Forward Act. Uh, it was HR2 in last year's session. And uh, uh, it passed largely on a party line vote in the House. Um, and in there, it, it, it uh, uh, contained $325 million for the National Scenic Byways Program over the next five years. Um, uh, it also uh, allowed uh, funds uh, from a $25 billion a year program called the National Highway Performance Program to be used to bury utilities. I'll talk about both of those in, in detail. Uh, plus, uh, there, uh, there's a dig once task force that also has to do with undergrounding uh, that um, it, it put nonprofit representation on this newly created task force. And uh, so that was something that uh, we thought was important. And also the billboard industry, which who we are often at odds with, um, uh, tried to gut the Highway Beautification Act. Um, they filed an amendment uh, Friday on a Friday evening at, uh, and it was before the Rules Committee at this time, uh, Friday evening at 5.39 p.m. We caught it right away. And um, the hearing was Monday at 1 p.m. By Monday evening, we had killed, killed the amendment in committee. So we're really thrilled uh, that uh, we did that because I think if the Highway Beautification Act disappeared, we'd, we'd all suffer for that. So um, I'm going to get into some details here. So uh, what is what is HR2 contained for scenic byways? It contains 325 million for over five years. This is how it's allocated. Uh, you know, because this was being done last year, uh, the way it was structured was FY21 would have been 55 million. Obviously, now that we've moved forward a year, FY22 would be 55 million, and then you can take it from there. FY23 would be 60 million, and on and on and on. So uh, this is how it's structured, and uh, uh, we think there is a very good chance we can keep this in the legislation for this year. Uh, but uh, we're going to need help. You know, we're going to need everybody's help here on the phone. Uh, and on the on the call rather on the uh, uh, Microsoft Teams call, and uh, uh, because it takes a lot of people, um, you know, advocating for something, which we'll talk How, about. How can the while. byways express uh, the importance of including and getting this funded? What what steps can they do yep. to help? I'm actually uh, I'm going to actually talk about that uh, sort of towards the end of this. So I'm going to hold on that question if you don't mind. Um, any other questions for now? So I'd say one other thing I want to mention here is uh, the language that we also think can be improved from the last version last year. Um, the language last year um, uh, didn't guarantee the funding, which is something we definitely want uh, to change this year. So that's something we'll be working on. So basically it was subject to appropriation every year, but it's laid out this, this funding schedule. Uh, we want to try to make this so that way the funding is act it's actually funded within the bounds of the legislation so that way we don't have to go for an annual appropriation. Um, and so if we get that done, that means that we would be guaranteed this funding for five years. So uh, it's something we're really excited about. Uh, any any other questions before I move on? I'm going to move on to undergrounding next. Now let's just move forward. We've got some questions, but we can address those later. OK, um, so. Uh, Underground utility wires. This is, by the way, this picture, uh, if, a lot of my pictures have been from Florida, if you haven't seen. Uh, this one was taken by one of our board members that's in um, uh, Walton County, Florida. And she uh, saw the moon come out one early evening and she said, oh, I really want to take a picture of the moon. And this is the picture she got. <laughs> and uh, and she said, oh my goodness, look at, look at all these wires that are just ruining this beautiful view. So, um, so I wanted to uh, use that one here. Uh, this, uh, uh, we got some language that was really transformative in the Moving Forward Act that allows funds from a $25 billion a year program, the National Highway Performance Program, to be used towards bearing utilities. Um, and you can see the actual language in bullet two here. Um, and, um, uh, and I also mentioned the Dig Ones Task Force. So um, you, the, the, the only catch here is that, uh, the undergrounding would have to take place in the course of other infrastructure improvements that are happening 
uh, while using this National Highway Performance Program. So you're going to want to talk to your FDOT folks because they know how this program works and um, and in, you know talk to them about if you're interested in undergrounding talk to them about how you can integrate you know undergrounding for your byway into their uh, national highway performance program funds because these are funds that um, uh, all the states do receive so um, that's really um, great information uh, any questions here before i move on okay Actually, um, hey Mark, uh, yeah. I got a question. So the the dollar value, the twenty five billion, uh, who does that money go to? Does it go to the utilities to pay, or does DOT does it come down to the DOT and and they do the work? How how does that how would all that work? Comes down to the DOT. It comes okay. down to the DOT. And you know, let me just say this too, uh, for 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 the FDOT folks or any DOT folks on the phone or anybody um, interested in undergrounding. We are right now trying to develop, um, we're, we're, we're trying to develop some, we're trying to raise some funds to develop some technical specifications that can really help lower the cost of undergrounding. Um, what we find is we find that utilities uh, oftentimes uh, are uh, overcharging uh, for uh, the undergrounding. And the reason is, um, you know, they're giving you uh, the, the fully loaded Rolls Royce when it's not always needed. So for instance, you don't always need to encase a um, uh, you know uh, an undergrounding conduit in concrete. You know uh, that's really more for like if you're in a flood area, then you should do that. You know also um, you don't always need to uh, run a, a second conduit, sort of a backup conduit. Um, that would be more if it's like a major line, but like if it's a distribution line that's not you know too consequential you're fine having just the one the one conduit. Um, and also um, when you look at uh, um, uh, um, how you do the work, a lot of times people think of, oh, they have to dig a trench. Well, it, it isn't always the case, depending on the, you know, the topo depending on the topography, you don't always have to dig a trench. There's directional boring that you can do now to actually bore a little tunnel you know, uh, uh, that your conduit can be inserted into. And so there's a lot of technology upgrades that have happened recently that are going to really lower the cost of undergrounding. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that we can get some technical specifications out later this year. I, I, I can't promise anything because we're still actively trying to raise money for this right now. But uh, we feel pretty good about, um, uh, you know, where the future of undergrounding, we think it's only going to get better. So is there a situation where you're too close to the coast to underground utilities? Um, so again, you know, that's what encasing in concrete can help with, you know, um, and, you know, the truth is uh, being near the coast would be a really ideal place to underground because you have such beautiful views near the coast. Right. Um, and so uh, we believe that, um, you know, uh, 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 you know, it can all it can all go underground and, uh, you know, the cost savings to utilities. Th that's another thing. We only talked about the technical specifications, but if I were to talk about the savings to utilities as well, that's also going to be significant. And we think that that is something that should um, also be factored into how they um, um, how they uh, uh, price it, because utilities are going to save, you know, at least 25%, they should be paying for at least 25% of the undergrounding themselves. We think it should really be 50% because there's no more vegetation management. You know, it's more reliable. So less, less, less times you got to send out crews to go out and fix it. So there's a whole, you know, uh, a s s set of uh, um, um, factors that need to go into that pricing. Yeah. Uh, other questions? We've got a couple, but we can save those for later. It seems more appropriate at the end, maybe. OK, um, so I'm just going to briefly talk about the Senate version of this bill. It's S2302. Um, this passed, uh, this never made it to the full Senate floor. Uh, the Senate started to work on this before the pandemic. Uh, this was uh, in 2019. It only went through committee, the uh, Senate Environment and Public Works Committee. And um, uh, we, we one of the things we talk, we like to talk about is um, uh, uh, gateway communities and uh, uh, native plantings. 
Uh, we always encourage native plantings everywhere, uh, but there's a great program called the Federal Lands Access Program. It's about a $300 million a year program. Uh, if, you, if, you, if your byway is near federal land, uh, it doesn't have to be in it, uh, it just has to be near it. If it's near federal land, you might wanna look into this program uh, the Federal Lands Access Program. Again, $300 million a year is a lot of money that goes out for this program. It's a great program and it improves the roadways that are near federal lands. And it's a nice program where it, uh, there's three factors involved. Number one, uh, the, the federal land entity uh, that you, you know, you're near, they're involved in the decision-making. Your state DOT is involved in the decision-making and the local community uh, municipality uh, that uh, that the project is in is involved. And so you need to get sort of um, uh, a good, uh, um, you need to get all three folks on board in order to tap funds from this program. So I would encourage you to look into that as well. Um, uh, so I, I just sort of talked through the slide. I, I should have moved on to this slide. I apologize for that. But um, uh, you can see we also made some language changes. So some of the things that uh, we will be eligible under here would be things like landscaping, uh, contextual wayfinding markers, things like that. So um, I'm going to move on though. And um, uh, uh, HR2, because the Senate has changed party control, we expect HR2 to be sort of the initial draft that um, folks are working off of. And as I mentioned, the current authorization lasts until September 30th. And we think this will probably be a, a vehicle for a much bigger infrastructure bill this spring or summer. I already sort of told you the timeline. We think they'll start work on this in either April, May or June. Uh, and uh, we think this is going to be the biggest bill that Congress works on this summer. So um, uh, so that's where we are. A uh, couple other quick things. You know, uh, we don't like billboards, as I mentioned, uh, uh, for the most part. You can see what's happening across the country in many states um, uh, is that uh, trees are being clear cut just for the sake for the only for the solely for the sake of increasing billboard visibility we think that's terrible this neighborhood is in the is in the before picture uh you just can't see the houses because those trees are acting as a natural visual barrier sound barrier pollution barrier um you know runoff barrier uh as you see there's an elevation change um but uh, unfortunately this neighborhood is now uh left uh to fend for themselves their property values have gone down uh, it's really a bad situation here, and we want to prevent this from happening uh, uh, all over the country as it's happening right now. You can see Florida right now is on the naughty list when it comes to this practice, and so uh, we want to uh, make it a nationwide policy that um, you know nobody can do this. So, um, <clears throat> with that said, I told you I would talk about this. Your advocacy matters enormously. All right, your phone calls and emails to members of Congress, they matter. You want to build those relationships. You want to schedule meetings with your members, staff in district. Obviously, we're doing everything virtually these days, and that's fine. Uh, when you come to D.C., meet with your member uh, of Congress and or their staff. Uh, and um, I, what I'd like to do is um, I would like to take a moment uh, to advocate right now. Um, let me see if I can do this here. Um, if we can go into the chat for a moment, um, I can put in this link. And if folks, uh, I don't like the chat here. All right. I'm trying to paste a link in here, but I cannot seem to. The chat is bigger than my screen for some reason. Mark, this is Karen. I can go ahead and post the link in the chat. Great, I appreciate it. So that's where um, so that's where this is. And um, if people want to just take a moment right now and just th this is just an easy thing. This is a quick thank you. If people want to click the link, it takes 10 seconds, 15 seconds. And in those 15 seconds, you will have contacted your member of Congress thanking them for the $16 million, which I know you're going to want to do because uh, you're going to you, because it's really important to all of uh, every, all the work that you're doing. So that's critical. So I would encourage you to paste it in there right now. Go ahead and click the link 
and um, and uh, um, you know, just take the 10 seconds to do that right now. I am unsure what um, what Microsoft Teams has done to me here, but I cannot even see any controls at this point. Mark, can you see the the share or unshare your screen? Uh, there it is. Try unsharing and then resharing to see if those tools pop back up. Uh, actually, I, I cannot see it. Huh. Oh, I thought I just saw them pop up. Huh. I don't know how to get out. Of, well, my presentation was over anyway. This was the last slide, but uh, I'd love to know how to stop sharing my screen if I'm sharing it. Uh, I'm, I'll share the closing slide, Mark, and it should override your, your screen share. Great. While y'all are doing that, I'm going to scroll up to a question that I wanted right. to get back to. Um, so Becca's question is, and I think I could take this one, uh, are there any current grants or funding available for an established scenic highway that can be applied for now instead of waiting for the new byway announcements this year. Um, there are not any scenic byway funds uh, programmed in the current year as of now. So uh, if you have a specific uh, project that you're looking for, um, I see you say specifically land conservation, you may want to check out the Florida Department of Environmental Protection website and they have a program called Forever Florida, and they specifically do land conservation. I hope that answers your question. And another question we have here, it sounds like partnerships are key to most of these federal programs. Looks like funds flow from the feds to the states, to local governments, not directly to byway organizations. Sounds like partnerships are a key to success. So I, I would uh, would echo that sentiment that um, uh, these these funds generally will filter through the local agency. Just depending on the projects, um, byway management plans may not need to go through the local government, but the bigger projects would. Right. That that's right. So um, that's that, partnerships are always great. In, in this very specific case of the National Scenic Byways Program, the funds go to the state government and the state goes gives them generally directly. The state can allocate them, I suppose, through most municipalities, but most places that I've seen, they allocate them directly to byways from the state level. Yeah, so you're definitely going to want to get to know your FDOT folks very well, which I know many of them are here, so it's great. Let's see if I missed any questions. Uh, so one I'd overlooked, um, what are your thoughts on funding master plans and byway management plans? What are my thoughts on funding byway management plans? And mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I they're certainly an acceptable, uh, 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 they're an acceptable piece of, of money that, uh, you know, acceptable, uh, eligible expense. And I would actually say this, uh, actually priority in the rules of the program, priority is actually given to, um, uh, to, um, uh, to those uh, quarter management plans that are being developed or changed specifically to apply for the National Scenic Byways status. So, there actually is a, uh, definitely a um, you know a, an emphasis on that. So I, I think it's always good to have a plan. That's certainly true. Um, I, I, depending on the complexity of your byway, um, uh, it it absolutely um, uh, you know could be a short plan. Qu quarter management plans don't have to be long, or it might be more complicated if you if you have a more complicated byway. And so it really depends. But uh, I do think having a quarter management plan is a best practice that, um, uh, you know, uh, most people should, you know, if you don't have one, uh, you can definitely use this to up, update it, but uh, you'll also want to talk to your FDOT folks or your DOT folks if you're not from Florida, um, uh, you know, as far as um, uh, 
what what their thoughts on emphasis are, because ultimately they will be part of the decision as well. I saw a question about um, uh, uh, about matching funds. Yeah, we expect it to be 80% uh, of the money to be uh, federal and then 20% some combination of state, local or private or whatever. Um, and so uh, we do think that, that that match will will stay the same. And and I encourage you to go to our website to look at um, uh, those uh, key differences uh, because um, uh, to look at our FAQs and uh, because if you look on our website, we should have all that information on the matching funds as well. Um, other questions? So James asked, uh, I did hear that funding may be available for a visitor center. Ah, uh, yes. Um, yeah, so visitor centers are an eligible expense. Uh, in, in, uh, in, you know, they, they have funded visitor centers in the past. So that is absolutely something that you could propose. Uh, but again, you know, you're going to want to get your DOT partners on board as well and make sure they're part of the conversation because uh, uh, ultimately the DOT will be uh, submitting the list to FHWA for their uh, requests. And uh, uh, so getting them on board is, is really important. And it's something I want to stress that we didn't touch upon uh, because it's more of a DOT uh, process, but um, not all these projects that we've talked about, but the bigger projects will need to be on your MPO or TPO priority list. So you'll want to work with your local government to ensure that your project application gets submitted to the MPO and TPO to get prioritized uh, so that so you can get funding for it. Uh, like I said, not the small projects like a BMP update, um, but these bigger ones like a visitor center, you'll need to have, you know, a concept and um, the plans and uh, go through the process with the DOT to get those funds. Um, so uh, it, the, the, the funds get funneled through the local agency. Uh, let's see, uh, here's one up here, Becca. Let's see, I want to scroll down because. So she, yeah. she's referring to the Ormond Scenic Loop and Trail, and she wanted to ask you, Mark, um, do you have any other ideas for, for preservation funding for the Ormond Scenic Loop and Trail? Um, I, I, I'd ha I'm not I'm not 100 percent familiar with. Um, with with that specific, I'd have to know more. I'd have to know a little bit more context and really it's not about, you know, what I think anyway, it's really about, you know, scenic byways. What's great about scenic byways is that they're really grassroots entities and uh, and they and and what's what's great about them is that you need to have sort of local buy in of the residents businesses, you know, along the byway. And so uh, I think that's part of the part of having a quarter management plan is that you can identify or a strategic plan, if you will, um, is you can identify what the needs are along the byway. Uh, and, and I apologize, by the way, I cannot see any of the questions at this point. I don't know what's going on with teams, uh, but uh, uh, so I appreciate you, you know, uh, uh, Carla, uh, Claudia rather, uh, uh, telling me about the questions. So uh, don't, <clears throat> excuse me, Donna's question is, what about grants, et cetera, other than governmental? Is there a central uh, source or a list of such grants that you're aware of that's available for local organizations? No, I mean, there's really, there's no central place. I mean, there are resources you can go to like the Foundation Center or Grant Station, you know, that uh, uh, try to let you know when grants for certain topic areas are coming up from philanthropic uh, uh, organizations around the country. Um, but um, I, we, there, you know, that's probably the, the best you're going to get when it comes to centralizing that type of stuff is, is uh, a, a private uh, pr provider like, like, like I said, like uh, the Foundation Center. Okay, and another question we have here, uh, do Byway grant applications get submitted directly to FHWA or do they get routed through FDOT first? FDOT first. Yes. And um, how will FDOT determine which projects get priority for grant funding? 
That's up to FDOT. Is that is that the question? How will FDOT? Yes. Follow? Yes. That's that's so, not up to me. That's up. That maybe maybe Claudia, you can help answer that. Right. Well, what we would do is we would work with the the byway um, and and ensure that the project that they're interested in is you know fits the criteria of what's established in in the guidelines. If it is and uh, an application is drawn up and we help you get that prepared, that application actually will get sent up to central office for review. Um, and then it will get submitted to FHWA for uh, for ranking and for award. Great. That's how that's going to happen. Uh, Rob asked, is money available for financing the acquisition of private land on a byway to preserve its scenic resources? Absolutely, both for acquisition of land and for easements. Um, you know, that would that would fall squarely in uh, the criteria that I listed. But it has to be like adjacent. It can't be, you know, somewhere else. You know, it, it does that. That's a key factor. Um, uh, I think you start to lose um, you start to lose eligibility if you're all of a sudden moving away from the byway. Right. So that's it. That's all the questions that I see. I don't believe I overlooked any. If I did, I do apologize. Um, is there any final closing thoughts, uh, Mark, that you might have? Um, just I would ask people again to to click the link uh, uh, in in the in the chat, and it takes you ten seconds, literally, and those ten seconds make a big difference. And um, and join our list because we will let you know the key points when it's time to uh, uh, contact your member of Congress, uh, so that way you can advocate for funding. And uh, we have the ability to do that. And as you can see by that link that you hopefully just clicked we make it really easy for you and so if we get thousands of people across the country tens of thousands of people across the country doing the same thing then we have a much better chance of getting scenic byways funding so you need to be part of the solution as well so i'd ask you all to just click that link and take the 10 seconds mark can you talk can you talk just quickly about what is scenic america i i, I know obviously advocacy yeah. Is there memberships? Are there do you accept donations? How how does Scenic America work? Yeah, uh, so we are generally advocacy focused. Um, we are not uh, we don't receive any government funding uh, uh, right now. And um, and uh, all of our uh, funding comes through uh, donations from our supporters, people like you and, um, uh, you know, some major donors who really care about scenic beauty some foundations that care about scenic beauty. And so, uh, you know, a big part of my job is raising the money to uh, make sure we have the capacity to advocate for these type of things. So um, that's how that's how we work. And, um, you know, we're we're a 501c3 charity. And so everything we do is, uh, uh, you know, a tax write off. And um, uh, and we uh, always make sure that uh, um, uh, what we're doing is um, uh, uh, for the benefit of the country, uh, because as a public charity, we have that responsibility to make sure that everything we do is a uh, is for the benefit of the public. Wonderful. Well, Mark, you can't see the chat, so I'm going to let you know that folks are piping in and they're saying thank you. Oh, great. Uh, thank they're you. saying done. And I take I take that to mean that they got up to the website and then clicked on that. Oh, perfect. And, um, uh, thanks, Mark. Way to go. So. Um, so in closing, I want everybody to, to know that you're going to get a link that you'll be able to send this out. And if you want to watch it again or share it far and wide, or you need a refresher and you want to go back and, and re-listen to something, you'll be able to do that. If you have any topics in the future you want us to cover for you and you have a contact, that's even better. Send them my way and we'll make contact to, to have somebody come and speak um, to the group. Mark, thank you so much. This was very engaging. We took up a whole hour. I think everybody was participating. So this was a total success. Thank, thank you so you much. Mark. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Have great. a great day. You too. Great job. Bye, Bye, -bye now. Thank you.